Hi, I'm Maggie Woodley and I'm from Red Ted Art and today we're here to talk about tin can crafts. So I was actually normally going to show you an empty tin can but I've just realised I've only got my finished project. So we'll we'll have a chat about what you can make out of the, the humble tin can that normally lands in your recycling bin um, but actually there's lots of things you can do with them that, that are really fun. And we have our normal panel of crafters who can share different ideas. Um, but I'll start off today with um, a couple of, of our ideas. So, well, I'll start off with this one, seeing as you've seen it already. Um, these are tin can vases, um, where this one I painted with enamel, and this one I painted with um, acrylic paint. Um, so, obviously, the enamel will be better for outdoor use. Acrylic paint, you know, it won't last, but it just, you know, I was just trying out different paints to see how it works. And then I decorated. The decorations are made from napkins. Um, so normally uh, for napkin tip pars, you would take your napkin and you'd like peel it apart and just take that very thin top layer. But because um, this is all quite clunky and also this purple is such a dark colour, I actually just stuck the whole napkin on and soaked it with the decoupage glue so that it got really sort of firm and solidly stuck on. And I think overall they, they, they work quite well, so I think they're quite sweet. Um, sort of your shabby chic decorations for a, a, a garden party or even a wedding, and you can make it match your, your party decor. So if you've got little napkins and stuff that you really like, you can make it match those. I should have shown the napkins actually. Next one is what I call our five minute crafts. Um, here we go, so it's quite noisy. This sounds really good. It's got rice in it. This has got stones in it. And then on top of that, it's a, it's a drum. So um, obviously, these are really quick to make. Um, I have to confess, also, because it's balloons being tapped regularly, they will break at some point. But you know what? You just pop a new one on. But it also means that I would say um, take care. If like This one's got stones in. So be careful if you are with young kids. You know, some people worry about balloons and whether they're dangerous or not. So, you know, this is a fun musical instrument. But, you know, keep an eye on your kids when you do use them. And I have to say, these are from, like, normally, I plug this book, don't I? But today, I'm plugging this book. So this is the 101 Kids Activities <laughs> book from um, our friends Holly and Rachel at Kids Activities blog. And these little drums came from their book and it's a really lovely book with lots of ideas to keep you busy and I just want to show you another one that I haven't made yet also using a tin look at that it's using um, a tin can you, you make a hole at the top of it get some string oh, around cool. it yeah it's fun isn't it and then you've got that that you jump over you could jump and spin so I thought that was actually a really fun one and um, I was going to have a go at it I think the trick to this is that you have a thick rope because I did have a quick go with the thin rope and then it just gets sort of twisted around itself but if you make this with a thick rope I think that looks really fun so these are the sort of projects that you'll find in this book um, lots of ideas for all sorts of age groups from play-doh to science projects for older kids and you know well, this will keep you busy this summer so anyway so that's where our little tin cans came from and then very quickly because I, I know I, I like to talk um, made these ages ago so a pen pot holder with washi tape really quick very easy. Similarly, I'm actually quite pleased with this, uh, decorated with um, wrapping paper. And again, you'd think, you know, it'll tear or come off, but because it's so flat against the tin, it's lasted ages. I mean, I think I did this three months ago or something. And if you think about tin can, you know, when you peel off the labels, actually, they usually come off in one go, and there's only a bit of tape at the back. So wrapping paper looks pretty job done. <laughs> um, yeah, Maggie, can you, because I couldn't see yeah. When you put the wrapping paper around, do you still see all the ridges, or does it actually go smooth? Does it is it smooth? The smooth thing? Uh, you no, know, it's smooth. You don't see the ridges. No, no, it's a good point actually. You, you see it. You notice it a little bit at the back, maybe where the tape is, because that's where it's sort of flattened against the um, the tin. But actually, no, no, you don't. I'm trying to sort of hold it a bit closer. I don't that's think you can, can you? So it's quite smooth, isn't it? Whilst you're right with the washi tape, you do you do have the ridges there. You can see those there, can't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, finally, a, a quick one again, very classic kids' craft. You can hear all the noise there. Um, you don't have to paint these, but Pip Squeak enjoyed painting them. These are the tin can stilts. You know, when you put your feet in, one foot here, the other foot there, and then the kids get to do some balancing and walking in the garden. Um, 
great, you know, for fine, no, no, not fine motor skills, gross motor skills, <laughs> uh, balancing around in the garden. Um, we found uh, the bigger the tin, the better. And also, um, if they wear their shoes, they, they're a bit more comfy. Yeah. But they love them, and they were really simple to make, and you don't have to paint them. I mean, the painting was just a bit of extra craft because we like to paint. But if you don't, you know, they look great just in silver. I mean, look at these pans. I think they look actually really lovely, so really shiny. Um, you just have to take a, a little a nail and a hammer. Obviously, the parents do this carefully. Older kids can help you, and then you just thread in your um, your string, you know, and Bob's your uncle. So you know, really fun little craft. Anyway, I'm going to pass over now to Ali. Oh, hello. And I'm not on mute, so you can hear me straight away. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, Maggie, about your um, the ankle um, swinging games and all the call it, but. Um, we did something like that ages ago where you needed the string not to knot and, and get tangled. So we used old pen lids and we thread them onto the string. Does that, does this oh, okay, so yeah, yeah. Well, just just so a couple or the whole the whole string. A long a, not the bit that goes around the ankle, but the the one the, the bit that goes from your ankle to the tin. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah great. So it okay. kind of makes a but it's so therefore it's bendy. Yeah, because that's the bit that we had problems with was yeah. to make Stop. You could use pony bees. Save fun. your pony bees. Lovely. Pony bees, they're beautiful. Pony bees. Good idea. I might try that out here and I'll report back because that would look yeah, really pretty and makes it a very good idea. Lovely. Yeah, that. Yeah, that's really good. 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 Yeah, you can't really see it, but anyway, see here, this is um, paint, front door paint, left over, and we just dunked the tins in it, hung them on the washing line to dry, so they dripped a bit, and put some herbs in them, so that was last last summer, and um, we also last summer invented this, or we didn't invent it, but we re reinvented kick the can, can you see really? <laughs> yep. Yep, tin cans, yep. labels. So yeah. um, we did some little principles to go on these, um, and this is a really good game to take over the park. And uh, it's a bit like I don't know what you called it. I, we used to call it pom pom free or British bulldog. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I guess you glue those on so that the paper doesn't tear off as you kick them around. Yes. Yeah. So it's yeah, I just use. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then um, actually this week with Father's Day looming, oh. you see these. <laughs> Yeah, very good. So um, it's got a really annoying habit of like collecting two pound coins, and they're in piles on shelves and mantelpieces. That is that tin full of two pound coins. <clears throat> oh, oh my goodness! <laughs> I know, honestly, I <laughs> I have to smuggle them out and put them into socks and things in my drawer because it just gets crazy. It's like it's like <laughs> this old people that hoard things. Oh, what, does oh, wow, wow. what does he do with them? What does he do with them? Well, for buying drum kits, the guitars, allegedly. <laughs> saving is saving. You see, he's saving up for stuff with them. Yeah, saving up stuff. But we just thought we'd make these. We thought they were nice. <laughs> Much better yeah, than it lying around. Definitely. Exactly. The kids chose the colour, and we just thought it'd be a really nice little Father's Day gift. You know, easy to make, free. That's, oh, that's it, really. Nice. So, who wants to pass on to Anthea? Oh, well, Ali, your tin there, where it says hands off. Dad saving, but actually for Father's Day you don't have to have the savings. You could just say hands off, Daddy's, and you could fill it with whatever sweets. Or well, leave it for the baby. I'll do you an alternative one. <laughs> yeah, socks. 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 Yeah. Can you imagine a lot of pants sticking out of it? <laughs> you know what would be really nice if you could make this into if you bought some new socks and yeah. put them in there as a gift. So it's Absolutely, like a gift that'd be really cool. I think that's a really cool um, way to kind of. Give a dad's present. You know what I mean? oh, thank you. See, look, it's all about brainstorming, isn't it? I'll do that. I'll change those then. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, have, you know, um, both, have both, Ali. Have the savings one and then have yeah. the gift wrap one. Well, yeah. obviously, I wouldn't do the savings <laughs> one. <laughs> um, well, I was going to think about that though, Maggie. You know, because I don't have a cat, but when um, when, I, when I feed somebody's cat when they're on holiday, they have those little plastic lids that go on top of yes. their cat food. So that that's your Gift wrap sorted. sorted. Yeah. yeah, but you know what that lid is? That isn't a cat food lid. That's a Nutella it? jar lid. It's a Nutella <laughs> jar. But it fits the tins. 
It's <laughs> dropped down. Yeah. I need to buy them at kitchen stores, the little plastic sugar things. Excellent. Sorted. <laughs> oh, and here. Right, oh, okay, okay. Oh, as ever, I've got quite a few things. <laughs> but um, I've got, I've, I've done this one before, but one of the ones I think is great, actually, not many people, is Sweetie Jar or Sweetie Trees. Mm. Tears, make fantastic um, bottoms for, you know, and this one I used, um, this was for t the teacher's idea one. This is um, blackboard paint. Lovely. So, right, yeah, so you can work something on this one. You know, and they're very easy to, easy to make these things. I actually, you're supposed to use. Um, with cocktail sticks, and I find those quite hard because they have to snap going in. So I use a hot glue gun to stick. It looks really nice. Very yeah. simple. Yeah. yeah, and it means that because you know if you're not going to use it again, it means you've, you've recycled a tin. Because lots of people use jars, bucket, and um, buckets, and they use um, flower pots, and it all gets kind of cemented in with the plaster of Paris. So uh, and if you use an enamel one, because they're nice and shiny, so you can use it any colour that you, you like. But I think they're brilliant for. Actually, it's a good pieces. point because like you say lots of people make them with little like a little bucket, and it's such a waste, isn't it? Why is the tin? Yeah. They're going to bin anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, the plaster of Paris goes in, and they can't use it. You know, unless you kind of go to the effort of putting cling film in, so you can kind of lift it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's that's just brilliant. Um, my other, this is a bit like Maggie actually. Because it's excuse me. And I haven't decorated. I quite like tins on their own. The shiny ones. I think you're right. Yeah. Not not so good. But this one, all I did here is I've just painted it white, and I think that actually looks really nice. This is um. One of the ones that normally has a plastic lid, I don't know if it had kind of special chocolate biscuits or it had coffee, special coffee in it, so it's a slightly bigger and I quite like the shape of it because it's a bit Yeah, I was going to say it's an unusual shape, isn't it? But you know what, I like the silver cans as well. I think sometimes just the can on its own yeah. does look quite, quite retro, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely, and it's kind of, it shows off the um, the flowers rather than the yeah. can. It depends what you're kind of trying to do. I haven't finished these, I didn't have enough time, but I've made a set to go outside um, in my garden because we're always eating out, it's getting sunny, so again I use a seaside thing because we live near the sea, so we've got slightly different blues, and we've Very got nice. tomato ketchup in there, you know, napkins, ours are always blowing away, we normally stick a stone on them. Yeah, um, yeah but it's good yeah, and then the girls will take out, we've got a big cutlery basket, so they take everything out, so if you have it in just a little tin, that would be great. And I'm going to decorate these with um, some natural twine and some shells. Oh, right. yeah. And I have to have say, time. I really like how the enamel goes on. I think it's it's got a really nice finish, doesn't it? It's got a really the enamel nice And dries so quickly as well, doesn't it? Not the white, though. I'm going to say that white was an absolute nightmare. I mean, it's... How many layers did you have to put on? Oh, I ended up, okay, so this this is this is not enamel, um, okay. the little ones that I'll show you in a minute is yeah. enamel, and I must have put six layers on, and it still oh. was showing, um, it's just not worth it, I think, unless you do, I put, this is, um, an under, I used an undercoat on this, and then I just put yeah. acrylic on it, and yeah. I didn't even, and I tried two different acrylics, I tried like a thick reeds, you know the little ones that are really thick. And that was too thick. So the one that worked the best for me was the kind of watered down kiddie acrylic because it just okay, goes okay. on really quickly and dries super fast and it was two layers and, and worked fine. But I would say don't use for large areas white enamel. Unless the spray is better. I don't know if any of you have used the spray. Oh yeah, spray would be good. Yeah. Or even just um I was gonna say actually using spray paint full stop. Would, would probably work quite well, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean painting the colours on was super quick because it dries so fast. The spray's a bit more kind of nasty, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then these, oh, I always have a new love, don't I? <sighs> this is, this is just <laughs> adorable, and I don't know if you can see this. These oh. are the little half ones, whoops, and my girls are always, we've got all kinds of things, Hello Kitty, we've got trash packs, we've got moshy mugs. Yeah. We're always looking for little things. So I've painted the outside with enamel, okay. but yep. the inside I used acrylic, <laughs> and I've <laughs> a little bit of patterned paper for the back and we're too. going to um, attach them See, and then these are little shelves for their little creatures vegetables oh. and they look so adorable I'm not going to be Hello Kitty's going to fall out um, and the paper you can change it I mean I'm tapping it out I haven't glued the paper in I just drew around the back cut the paper out popped it in and it kind of stays there almost by suction yep. Um, but I'm just going to take, take that out and stick a little hammer and nail on and then they're going to go onto the wall in little pods. Yeah, like that. lovely. That's really brilliant. Really, really pretty. You could probably even do three. I wouldn't do more than 
too many in a row. They look quite good, just sort of dotted around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're really nice. Super. You know, like bit, yeah. Mm. And that's that's all of mine. So it's now over to uh, Liz and wonderful things that she's got. Hello, thank you. Sorry, I had to run off. The postman was rattling on the door. Gosh, so they always do that, don't they? They always hang out tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I've got um, a few little bits. I just wanted to say, you know these little, um, you know the baked bean tins or whatever, the smaller ones or tuna tins? I kept a load of these last summer and they were really good. Uh, I put candles in camping. Oh, lovely, yeah. They were really good size. And and then they're just disposable. So collected up all my kind of odds and ends of candle stubs, melted them all in, put a wick in, and then some citronella, and then they were really good. They had all the around. So DIY. Oh, yeah, I love the anti thing. Really good. And safe. And also for my, um, for my anti wasp repellent, which is on my blog, that is really good because it's heat proof. So you have to look up what that is, but that's a really good trick. The little tins are worth keeping hold of. Um, what's that noise? It's Maggie, she's muted herself. <laughs> right, um, the other thing, I'm really surprised no one's done this. I thought people would have the punched lanterns, but nobody's got I them. But anyway, I was going to, but I didn't, so there you go. <laughs> well, I wanted to show you this, because this is one I made last summer, and it's been outside, and I really like how rusty it's gone now. So to start with, it was obviously nice and, you know, silver like all the others but literally within a couple of weeks being kind of sat outside it went really rustic and rusty and but I just really like it now it's really different is and the heart more rusty because it's hard to Sorry? see well, is, is there more rust around where you've hole punched the heart is it no it's all over all over although not inside strangely don't know why but um, yeah you'll get that effect really quickly if you leave it outside in the rain <laughs> for a couple of weeks and then I think they just look a bit different. Um, what else have I got? And Maggie might tell me off because this isn't really a tin can, this is a drinks can. But only because in England we don't really get, you know, the really nice ones that are printed rather than a paper label. Yep. You have to go to really kind of super deluxe deli. Oh, yeah, you don't get them. Yep. <laughs> but they're great. I've got a whole row of like um, these cans in my eyeballs yeah. in, all lined up. Um, they're a bit more tricky because you have to kind of cut the, the top off a drinks can, but tin cans are much easier if you can find the nice printed... Um, like the soup ones or something, ones. they're nice, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Like Andy Warhol in your back garden. Yeah. <laughs> and then this one I really like, although I did get some injuries, I got cut with this, so you need to use gloves. <laughs> so this is going to be a bird feeder, it's my little flower, oh. especially a sunflower. That's lovely. Um, so it's beautiful. You need some tin snips and some gloves. <laughs> 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 and then, um, obviously, it's really easy. You just kind of snip down, fold it out, and then this is painted with enamel paint as well. And I've seen people kind of attach them to sticks and have them as flowers filled with bird seed. Yeah. But they're really, they are really sharp, and if you've got kids, you don't really want them hanging around where they can get grabbed at. So I think I might do, you know, like um, Anthea's shelves, I think I could do a whole list of these. Oh, that'd be lovely. Also, nice I think idea. if you'd have them tipping, you have the rain coming in and it makes the seesaw soggy as well, doesn't yeah. it? So I guess if it's upright, I mean, obviously exactly. you can't fill it as much, but you can still fill it enough it and it won't get soggy. I think it's yeah. I think yeah, on the wall so that would be more of those. Would be, be really nice on my newly painted shed list. Yes, that would be good. And then the last thing I did, I made some bread in my tin That's such a good idea. Yeah. So it's really, it when you do it, I learned this lesson, you need to use the ones that you open with a tin can opener, not the pool, the ring oh, pool it. ones. The ring pool ones leave a lip around <laughs> the edge. Like this, if you can see, you yeah, get a lip. Yeah, 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 yeah. When your bread rises and cooks, you can't get it out. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> this, Liz, is why we blog. You have to eat to it like that. mistakes and to let people know, isn't it? So there you go, you've done your job well. <laughs> yeah, these are really nice. I thought if you're having like a garden party or a barbecue, they're quite kind of rustic and you can leave them in the tin and then people yeah. can just pull it out and, you know, tear a bit off. Just on the barbecue. And apparently, I haven't. 
to say. Yeah, I make cakes in them on a campfire. Lovely. So next time you go camping. Do you have to be careful about the inside? Sorry, do not lose. Do you have to be careful about what the inside of the tin is? Because, for example, like this one um, came white already. Some of them are plastic coated, aren't they? Say that again, sorry? Yeah, some of them you get that kind of like a rubbery inside, don't you? Yes, you, you should but, use those. Um, yeah, I think as long as they're metal. No, I wouldn't use them because that would melt in the oven. But as long as they're metal, obviously they're food safe because they've had food and so yeah, yeah. they seem yeah, all right. Use, oh, I'm not dead. Maybe, so. yeah, I would use the metal ones, the ones that you know, yeah, I think it's just on the, uh, on the side of caution if you don't know. Because you're right, a lot of the automato cans have the white, which look yeah. really nice for crafting. But you're right, you don't know what it's going to do to your cooking, so use a plain one. Yeah. And one that you don't with a tin opener. This one, the yeah. um, my tuna one, would be fantastic for cupcakes then. Yeah. It's a nice size. Yeah. yeah, that would be. That's what right. you want. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. we're all going to be making massive muffin size cakes. <laughs> <laughs> what Eggs. I did with the bread was I sprayed it with oil because I was worried it might not come out. Um, yeah. So I just sprayed it. You know, you can get that like release spray or whatever it's called. Mm. So just give it a squirt and then, yeah, yeah, works well. Brilliant. Well done. Lovely. So, lots of tin can ideas. Uh, we do like a bit of upcycling and thrifty crafting. Um, you know, just giving uh, kids activities another plug because it is a cute book. Um, have a look at it. You know, we're going we're to help each other, don't we? Um, but thanks again for all your ideas today. As usual, we'll put um, a blog post together with all the links so you can get extra information. But hopefully you've been inspired and many things you can already have a go at. So, um, thanks everyone for sharing your ideas and see you all again soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.